don't be sorry. All right, so can I just repeat myself? Yeah, okay. So, uh, so um, I graphed the first piece, first piece here, the absolute value of X. I made the entire V graph of the absolute value. And then I looked at my domain and it said it's only between negative three and one. So I went and I got my eraser and I erased everything that was less than negative three and everything that was greater than one. So I'm only between negative three and one. And since negative three is less than or equal to X and X is just less than one, that made it so that I had a closed circle up here and an open circle right here at, at X equals one. Then the next part of the graph is the cube root of X. So, you know, again, you, you really kind of need to become familiar with these, with these graphs. And the cube root graph is the one that is, is kind of like an S shape, but it's, uh, it's very flattened out. It's very flattened out. So if I, was to, if I wanted to graph the entire cube root function, um, I would have my X over here and then I would have the cube root of X over here. And, and since I know that I need some perfect cubes, I would use the numbers zero, which is a perfect cube, one, which is a perfect cube. And then I would skip all the way to eight, which is a perfect cube. And then I would do negative one and negative eight. And that way I get these nice integers for my Y values of zero, one, two, negative one, and negative two. So if I plot those, I have zero, zero. I have one, one, and that's interesting. It, it's, it, 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 okay, I have one, one. And then I have eight, which is over here, two. And then negative one, negative one. And then negative eight, negative two. So I can kind of see that that graph is, is going to be this kind of squishy, S-shaped thing that looks something like that. Are we happy with that? Yes? Okay, so, but it says only for X greater than one. So all of this stuff over here has got to go. And this has got to go. And so, oh, I did that nicely. So now it looks like this blue line right there But there is also an open circle here for the blue. So both the blue and the black <coughs> have open circles. Are we good with that? Yes, okay, good. Now, so then let's, let's do the domain. Well, um, okay, so, so the domain, uh, let's make my number line here. I need to go lower here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, negative one, two, three, four, five, so negative five and positive five. So with my first part, the black, the black graph, that says X is between negative three and one. So uh, and negative three is included, but one is not. So negative three, well, let's let's do it in black because it's the black graph. <coughs> Negative three, closed circle, all the, way, all the way to one, open circle. And then the next part of the domain says X greater than one. So that starts here, open circle, and goes this way to infinity. Still okay? Everybody with me? Question? Not yet? No? Okay, good. All right. So, so my farthest negative value is negative three. I do not go to negative infinity here. I, the farthest I go into the left is, is negative three. And that is included, so that is a bracket. And then I'm traveling along the road here, and I get to one, and it ends. And it doesn't pick up either. It doesn't pick up on the, on the other part of the graph. Both are open circles. 
So I'm going negative three to one with a parentheses. And then I'm uniting, well, again, I'm starting here at one, but it's not including one. And I'm going to infinity. This is the domain of this function. Question. Everybody's, everybody's okay with that. All right, let's let's do the range, and then we got to do the range by looking at the by looking at the picture. <clears throat> so, magic bowl. Magic bowl is asking Isabella, you're just getting called all day today. What is the lowest y value in my graph? Um. Would it be zero? It would be zero. And is it included or not included? Included? I think it is. So I have zero. Okay, now what is, oh, Mia is not here, so let's get somebody else. Gordon, what is, I'm going up on the Y values now. I got this gap right here at y equals one, don't I? Yeah. But, right. but but I think it's filled in over here, do you? Yeah. So then where, do I have any other gaps in my y values on, on this graph? I don't think we do. I don't think so either. So what is what is my, my upper end of the range? Uh, I think it's one. You think it's what? One. No, okay, I'm gonna argue with you. Why, why is it one? If, if this thing right here is going up past one, isn't that part of my range? Would it be infinity or? It would be infinity. But, but now let, let's, let's just, why, why were you thinking one? So I just wanna get clear, clarity. I don't know why it like I for some reason thought oh if it's like the same on both sides but I was wrong I don't know why I was thinking okay, but do you, do you see do you see the why it's this way yeah yeah now I understand it okay everybody else okay with this yes okay so uh, today is Wednesday so on um, next week uh, don't come to school on Monday so it'll be next week Tuesday we are going to look at this, this is a graph, and we are going to define the function based on the graph. Ooh, a puzzle, all right? But, uh, but yeah, we're gonna stop here. Um, do some practice problems, please do some practice problems and, uh, and ask me questions, all right? That's it. Well, next class is what? I don't know. It's, it's, it's break time. I'm, uh, we're on a modified schedule. Next class is at 9.30. Okay, so it's early release today. Go, later. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you.